Hey everyone, a while back we did a video on how TSM Bjergsen set up a gank by controlling the wave to bounce it back towards himself in 3 waves. Even without a gank, techniques like these are useful in bot lane too, especially when you're against an all-in support like Thresh, Blitz, Leona, and Alistar. So in today's video, we're going to show you how I used the 3 wave plan as Lucian Soraka to completely shut down a misfortune Leona in Platinum Elo. Of course, some of you may have missed our last video covering this strategy and may be wondering what it is. We'll get to it real soon, but first, let's break down the matchup and put together a game plan. Lucian and Soraka have the advantage in poke and sustain thanks to Soraka's range and healing. On the other hand, Misfortune and Leona have a ton of kill pressure if they can land an all-in since Soraka is fragile. So our opening game plan will look like this. Mission 1, abuse their level 1. We have strong poke and range advantages from level 1, whereas Leona has to be in melee range to do anything useful. The more we can leverage this advantage early on by landing poke, the less threatening their all-ins will become, since they'll be too low to win the fight. Mission 2, slow push the first wave. Slow pushing from the first wave will facilitate us looking for damage level 1. We'll also beat them to level 2 outside of their tower, which is crucial to executing mission 1. And if we don't crash the wave before they hit 2, at least we'll have a fat wave to keep us safe until mission 3, crash the third wave. This is the 3 wave plan. We'll build a slow push from the first wave, crash it to their tower, and bounce it back towards us. This allows us to push and pressure while they're level 1, and then cover our butts by getting pushed in by the time they can all in us at level 2. Alright, let's get into it. My jungler starts the game at our topside jungle, so I have a leash advantage. Consider our missions to abuse their level 1 and start the lane slow pushing. How should I use my leash advantage to carry out my game plan? Based on our subscriber reviews in the past, we know that players tend to start pushing early in lane when they have a leash advantage. But even though I want to slow push from level 1, I don't want to over push. Instead, I walk to their tri bush to poke and delay them as they walk to lane. If I can land poke and slow them down, it'll create the same effect as being in lane early and pushing, except I'll also have landed damage. Well, they ended up walking around and avoiding us at tri bush. We missed out on the chance to damage them, but this is just as good, since it'll make them more likely to miss the melee minion experience, facilitating mission 1. Once I realize they're walking around, I arrive to lane just in time to pick up the melee last hits. Meanwhile, Misfortune arrives late and misses experience from the melee minions. I already have the experience advantage and Soraka landed a Q on the minions, so I'm just last hitting instead of fighting for the push. As MF goes for an auto on my range line, I see Leona is split, so I go for an isolated trade to proc my press of the attack. To be honest, this wasn't the best trade since my W is still on cooldown. But we have a sustain advantage with Soraka, and I want to play to mission 1 by dealing as much damage as possible before the enemy hits too, so that their all-in pressure is reduced. And just to defend myself, the biggest reason this trade went so badly is because of this MVP melee minion that I totally wasn't looking at in-game. Freaking minions. After the trade, I back off behind my minions to secure last hits on the second wave, being sure to slow push to mission 2. As the second wave arrives, now's a good time to talk about setting up Lucian's infamous level 2 power spike. Most players walk up after they hit level 2, but if we walk up late like this, the enemy is more likely to back off properly. By walking up gradually while we're still level 1 and placing ourselves right outside our engage range, we'll have a better chance of landing damage. Also, make sure not to lose track of minions. For starters, we already have the minion advantage thanks to our slow push, so I don't need to auto to rush to level 2. I can just last it as I get in position to punish. In this case, the wave got messed up in a way that'll take 2 melees and 2 ranged minions to level up instead of just 3 melees. So, I gradually walk up after each minion, finally reaching the front of the wave as the second range minion dies. By advancing as this last minion dies, I'm now in range to fight on my level 2, even though the MF is staying back without farming. But before I go in, let's clear something up. If the enemy support was a ranged champion like Lulu or Thresh, should I go for this trade here? To be clear, no I wouldn't. Why? Well, remember what we talked about in last week's video on isolated trading. If I went in against two ranged champions that are grouped the way this Leona and MF are, I would be giving them a free, isolated trade since my Soraka is back behind me. On the other hand, if my Soraka was positioned further up, parallel to where I'd be once I go in, then I would go for the trade anyway since we'd be 2v2 with a level advantage. However, in this case, Leona is a level 1 melee support, so I can just dash in and kite up and away from the Leona to keep it an isolated trade between me and the level 1 misfortune. Hopefully you guys are starting to get an idea of how crucial isolated trades are in bot lane. Leona flash stuns me as MF gets too low, so I heal as soon as she flashes to counter her ignite, although looking back I didn't have to heal here. Now that I got the damage I was looking for, we've accomplished mission 1. 
From here, the game plan is simple. We're going to follow through with the 3-wave plan by crashing the Slowpush I used to trade with, playing to mission 3. If they were healthier, I'd make it a point to focus only on hard pushing here, to prevent them from freezing our wave. Once we crash, I'll look to bounce the wave back to me for a freeze. In doing so, I can use my HP advantage to zone, fish for kills, or force a recall, as opposed to just shoving waves in and allowing them to farm in their tower while they're low. When the wave crashes, I have a chance to use my wave pressure by either damaging tower or looking for more poke. We've found that players often don't know what the best way to snowball an advantage is. Which would you try to do? Well, my tower damage isn't too great right now as a level 280 carry, so landing more poke here is a higher value play. But I also don't want to throw the game under their tower. So, I calmly walk up a bit knowing Leona will go in on me, and once she lands E, I simply dash backward to drag her away from her tower to land even more damage. From here, most players would scrap the rest of the game plan to go for a dive since they're so low. Honestly, it was hard to resist, but MF still has heal. And, it's times like this where following our game plan is most rewarding. By abusing their weak level 1 and slow pushing in, we've set up an ideal scenario to end this lane safely. Now, all that's left is to finish carrying out our 3-wave plan. The current wave is low HP and won't push back out, so I'm going to look to start my freeze on the next wave. In between last hits, I'm walking in and out of their tower to try to bait MF heal or another Leona E, but remember, I have no real attention to fight. Finally, their wave is starting to push out again. Now's our chance to close out. I use this trick to set the freeze. I walk close to the wardless bush, draw all the mini nagro at once to group their minions up, and then walk into the bush to cut vision and drop mini nagro. This makes it so all their minions focus one of mine while my minions split aggro, creating a hard freeze and crushing their hopes and dreams of farming. I keep walking up between last hits to check if they're backing, which, considering their HP, is honestly the only thing they should do here. But after a few seconds, I realize they have no intention of backing. These guys really need skill capped. In times like this, some players might get caught up in enjoying their lead and forget to think about the enemy's perspective. Don't be that player. Their bottling clearly can't stay, but they're staying anyway. Why? Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to guess that they might be calling for a gank here. So, I adjust my positioning back a bit so that I'm not zoning past their range minions, which would open me up to a gank. If Soraka didn't just ward Tribush, now would also be a great time to ward, before our wave gets pushed too far in so that we'd have to walk past it to ward. Eventually the gank shows up, but it's just a Shivana and the enemy lane is still low, so I know that I can win this 3v2. Let's roll the clip first. Going back to the start, I don't bother backing off completely until the Giovanna starts walking in. This way, if she gives up the gank anyway, I've wasted her time for as long as possible. As Giovanna comes in from the flank, I know she'll be split from the MF Leona. Once again, remember isolated trading. MF and Leona failed to engage before Shivana walked in, so Shivana will be a lone 1v2 against me and Soraka for a moment. This is a good opportunity for an isolated trade, so I turn on the Giovanna and kite upward, away from MF and Leona. If Soraka stayed and autoed her more than once, we probably end up with a triple kill here. But she bailed on me, so I ended up having to flash away. Soraka decides to flash in after I flash out, so it's a bit sloppy, but we manage to turn on the enemy bot lane and pick up a kill on Misfortune. From here, all there's left to do is crash the wave and reset. But I get greedy when I'm smurfing, so I make my Soraka tank the tower for a final kill on Leona before clearing the wave and backing. By 6 minutes, we've managed to build a 43-4 CS difference over this plat elo MF. Well, that about covers it. We'll talk about all the other ways you can use this strategy in the Go Try It. There's a lot of them, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.